संस्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णा ते नम दिसी द हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फोर्थ कल्पतरुडे यू कैलक्युलेट फ्रॉम एटीन एटी सिक्स टू नाइन टू थाउजेंड टेन इट बिकम हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फोर्थ कल्पतरुडे सो एवरी इयर वी हैव बीन अब्जर्विंग दिस कल्पतरुडे ऑल ओवर इंडिया and perhaps in many centers outside india also the first it was observed it happened on a friday january 1st 1886 today is friday so we are lucky to get the full effect of sri ram krishna's first kalpataru we india we in india knew in 1886 india was under the rule of the british so and we knew the 1st january as the beginning of the roman new year what we call as the english new year is the roman new year so roman new year day and so during the british regime they still they celebrated it like that and at that time we accepted the roman calendar from january to december months and monday to sunday week the week would start on monday and end on sunday therefore the last day was a holiday so sunday was considered a weekly holiday in those days throughout our country because it was the british regime though we had nothing to do with sunday nothing no significant because the ruler he was they were all from uh, the christian lands so they consider sunday as a holiday for the christian people who follow christianity and they observe it as the holiday and holiday is always a merry making day so people would go out to whichever place they could go and make merry spend the day in eating drinking dancing and all that and the new year to them was for extreme merry making every sunday was a merry making day and then he put the new year day then it would be extreme merry making yesterday paper you must have seen all the people make maximum accidents on new year day because merry making merry making you lose your brains so you do think that you should not do and get into trouble so sri ram krishna so we were all involved in that we thought the first first year of the year the roman new year, new year should be celebrated by merry making by wasting our time on frivolous things sri ram krishna came to change the whole situation his enactment of the self revelation on 1st january 1886 at kasipur garden house calcutta on the eastern bank of the ganga river just opposite the present ram krishna mat and mission belur mat on just on the opposite side of the bank is kasipur garden so there he enacted this kalpataru day from that day onwards the 1st january has never occurred to us as a roman calendar first day of the year or it belongs to the only christians only or it belongs to a foreign regime all those ideas are gone now we as soon as 1st january comes we think of sri ram krishna and his kalpataru so this 1st january has become a most holy day for all indians and especially those people who revere sri ram krishna as avatar so the 1st january from 1886 1 january onwards has become the most sacred day for millions of spiritual followers all over the world and the devotees of sri ram krishna of course they observe it as a very very special day from 4 am onwards today you should see in, in many of our ashramas people start coming from 4 am onwards when the temple opens so today is being kalpataru day they will pray to sri ram krishna in kasipur garden house where sri ram krishna stayed the crowd will have started some 2 to 2 3 miles of 
queue will be there. And that will go on till night, 10 o'clock. So after all they have to go and they will not be allowed to stay more than two seconds or one second before the cot of Sri Ramakrishna on which you know, he slept. So they climb up, they go through the all two, two kilometers queue. They just go there, one second, two second, that's all. They are not allowed to even bend down. You have to close, you have to salute with standing. I'm clasping your both hands. Then, please, Jarigandi, Jarigandi, please go, go. So, this is the condition from morning 4 to evening 9. It is estimated about 1 to 1 and a half lakhs people take darshan of the place where Sri Ramakrishna stayed. So, that is already going on in Calcutta. We must know that the whole of that the Kasipur garden and the whole main road will be full of these people who will be getting into that Kasipur garden house. So from 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. 9 p.m. today, lakh and more, more than a lakh of devotees visit the Ram Krishna Matar Kasipur garden house to remember, to recapitulate the revelation by Sri Ram Krishna as a Kalpata Rupa. Similarly, do they visit, of course, other ashramas also. They go to Velurmat and other ashramas also. We have also gathered here for the same purpose. What they are doing in Kasipur, we are doing it here. That means remembering Sri Ramakrishna's, becoming a Kalpataru and bestowing his unconditioned grace upon every one of us. So, this incident has been explained to you by Abhiramanandi ji in Tamil, I will do it in English. Naturally, there may be some overlapping. May not be the whole thing. Somewhere it does overlap. Doesn't matter if it overlaps also. Avrittir asakrad upadeshat. In Brahma Sutra, it is said, you must hear a good thing more than once. Because at one first time you don't understand. Therefore, second time, third time you can hear a good thing. Avrati Asakrit Upadeshat. It is taught more than once the same thing so that people can understand it. So, this great theme of Sri Ramakrishna becoming Kalpataru suffers repeating. So, we will see how exactly the whole drama took place. Let me take this opportunity, first of all, to wish you all and yours a very, very happy new year of physical prosperity, mental peace and poise, and spiritual light and joy. May Sri Ram Krishna, Holy Mother and Swami Vivekananda confer their choicest blessings on all of you and yours and, the, and on the whole world at large so that the new year may bring us all the much awaited peace and prosperity and also spiritual light and joy to one and all. More than anything, may our people, known for their spiritual knowledge and love, really manifest them to usher in a new era of peaceful living and noble thinking, both inside our country and abroad, it is my earnest prayer to the all-merciful Sri Ram Krishna, Holy Mother and Swamiji. Now let us come to the topic of our discussion, the significance of the Kalpataru day. The sincere followers of Sri Ramakrishna's teaching, both young and old, formed into a band of spiritual seekers. We go back in history, who used to throng to Sri Ramakrishna during his last days to serve him and to hear his blessed words at the Kasipur garden. Sri Ramakrishna was teaching day and night when he was in Dakshineshwar. Then, you know, the cancer appeared on his throat. Then he was removed to Calcutta. And from Calcutta, first he went to Shampukur. From there he, he was shifted to a big house, a bungalow. It's called Kasipur Garden House. Garden House means bungalow. A big bungalow with first ground floor and first floor. He was staying on the first floor. Once, on the Kali Puja night of 1885, one year earlier, at Shampukur, Sri Ramakrishna had revealed himself as Kali, 
a divine mother to the devotees and accepted their worship. We know, those who have read the life of Sri Ramakrishna, he was on a Kali day, Kali Puja day, asked all the devotees, let us all worship Kali. But then there was no Kali Murti there, there was no Kali image and all the things were arranged and Sri Ramakrishna went into Samadhi. So he was sitting quiet in Samadhi and there was no image there. All the preparations of Kali Puja, he has himself asked them to make. Everything has been made. They did not understand what to do. Suddenly one of the devotees, Girish Chandra Ghosh, he got the idea, oh, what Sri Ramakrishna meant was, I am myself Kali, so he worshipped Kali in me. As soon as that idea occurred to him, he told others. All of them accepted that idea. All of them offered flowers and they paste, chandan paste and all that. At his feet, they said, Jai Kali. And Sri Ramakrishna stood up just like Kali. With one hand raised, Abhayan Varada Hasta. One Hasta is showing, don't have any fear. And another one is, I'll give you whatever you want. So the Abhayan Varada Hasta, in that posture, Sri Ramakrishna stood up just like Kali and the worship went on. So that was also a revelation that he was Kali himself. But this was of a special type. He had at that time, after that Kali, revealing himself as Kali, he had then told the devotees that he would reveal to everybody his true divine nature before he finally left this human body. He told that I am going to reveal who I am, why I have come here, what powers I have, what I can do to humanity. Everything I will make it public before I go away. And he would give an example. How can it? How is it possible? He said, haven't you seen the, the vegetable vendors who come to the bazaar in a big place? Weekly bazaars are held. So they come from interior villages where there is no market. So they keep everything for one week. Weekly bazaar, they bring it. When they bring it, there are a lot of customers. So they bargain the price, the highest price they, they give. They go on selling as it becomes evening, when it becomes 4 o'clock or 4.30. So 5.30 it becomes dark, they have to go back to their village. So they have got some more vegetables or fruits left. What will they do? Some more let us dispose this all. So he, they said, whatever price people ask, they give. And some more is left, even though people who will ask for the lowest price are also not there. At the end, when they find there is no customer, they say, this is remaining or come, you take without any price. Whoever comes, you take. So Sri Ramakrishna said, I will be like that vegetable seller who gives it away free before he goes. Because his going is more important than selling here. Sri Ramakrishna came to sell us the highest spiritual knowledge. All his later part of his life, at the last ten years of his life, was only giving and giving. He is gave to everybody whatever spiritual knowledge they could take. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, how much knowledge can I give? As much as the size of your bag, suppose you come with a bag which can take one kg of vegetable, you can take only one kg. Suppose somebody gives two kg, you cannot carry, there is no bag. So somebody will come with a big gunny bag. So they can take away the whole sh sh uh, shop itself. They are wise enough. People came like that. Narendra Nath went with a gunny bag. He got the whole store full of it. And then the other people went. They took only small bags. They got so much. So Sri Ramakrishna distributed the spiritual wealth all his life. But on 1st January 1886 was the day which he had predicted, I will make everything public, that I am the avatar that has come and what I can do to the world, I will reveal on that day. So Sri Ramakrishna had come to sell the highest spiritual knowledge, the God-realization to the suffering souls. He had sold it to many at a small price. People who went to Sri Ramakrishna, they did not do so much austerities. He himself used to say, those that come here will have realization very easily. As soon as they come, just like that, they will have realization. Because of the power of his own sadhana, 
So he would elevate the minds of others, purify the minds of others. They would immediately get spiritual realization. So he sold away as much as he could this God realization stuff at a small price after making them undergo small spiritual practices. Now, as he was ready to leave this world itself, in another six months, seven months he is going to leave. In August 16th he will leave the world. So last part of his life has come, just like the bazaar is going to close. Now he was ready to throw away the same at no price. People with or without any spiritual practices also would be realizing God through his mere blessing, through his mere wish. This is possible to God and God alone. Sri Krishna declares in the Bhagavad Gita, Devi Shesha Gunamayi Mama Maya Duratyaya Mamevaye Prapadyante Maya Medam Tarantite. This whole world is covered, he is, is deluded by my Devi, my, my divine power. Devi Hesha Gunamayi Maya. My divine power, which is a, made up of three gunas, Sattva and Rajas Tamas. This Gunas, this power can be removed, this delusion can go only when I confer my blessings on them. Only with my wish people will be able to cross over this Maya, otherwise not. So he has declared it there. So Sri Ramakrishna also says, it is, he shows that he is that Krishna himself that has come. He is the God himself has come, without whose grace no salvation, no spiritual illumination is possible. So, Sri Ramakrishna wants to show that power. No soul can be, get beyond the Maya unless and until the Lord Himself permits. Sri Ramakrishna demonstrates that. That He is, the, he is God Himself and He sh shows that one to everyone by liberating the bound souls. The, even the worst sinners by a mere wish and blessing. As we all know, in 1886, Sri Ramakrishna was ailing with cancer and was confined to bed for quite some days at the Kasipur Garden home. See, for several days he could not come out of the room at all, he was lying down. Hence, the devotees could not meet him at all, though they came to his place regularly. The devotees would come but he was on the first floor and all the direct disciples who were nursing him day and night, so they would tell them, he is health, his health is very bad, he is unable to move in within his room itself, how can you have darshan? No, wait. So they would come and they would not be able to meet him. They would sit down somewhere and would go away. About 20 days after Sri Ramakrishna's coming to this new place, it was 1886, January 1st, Friday, it was about 3 p.m. and it was a holiday for the Calcuttans, as I said, because it was a New Year day. Many had come to Kasipur to meet Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna suddenly got up from his sick bed and told Ramlal, his nephew, that he would like to stroll in the garden. After so many days, he wanted to come down to the ground floor and walk out of the building and stroll in the garden. Sir Ramlal was very happy. His uncle, at least he will be able to have a little fresh air. So Ramlal helped him put on his dress. So Sri Ramakrishna had his own dress. When he was lying down, he must be only with one dhoti, he must be lying down. He got up, he wore a white dhoti, red bordered in that one, so and a flannel shirt. It was January, cold, therefore he has to go, go out. So he put on a flannel shirt, a green flannel cap with flaps covering his ears. That was very common in those days. Old people used to wear with flaps covering their ears. He put on his socks and red slippers also. So he is putting on socks to protect him from the cold and red slippers. A baton adorned his hand. This was very peculiar. We have never seen in any other picture of him. No baton was there. Baton denotes power. So 
he is going as the power there. He is going as the Ishwara. Ishwara is the Lord, Lord of the universe, who controls the destinies of all the individual souls. So he is, goes, goes as the Karma Adhisha, the Lord who dispenses the fruits of karma to everybody, cancels the karma that are not required, and completely nullifies the effect of the karmas. He can do whatever, so that he is signified by the better. The baton he has never held, only on that day. Later also he did not wield the baton. Earlier also he did not wield the baton. Because that was the day of Kalpataru, where he reveals himself as the Karma Dhyaksha, the person who dispenses the destinies of the whole universe. So he took a baton also in his hand. And with an enchanting smile, which was very natural on his lips, and a divine light shooting out as it were from his body. It was Akshay Kumar Sen who described him. It was shooting out from his body. Whole body was covered. And only the face was a little open. And the fingers were open. Palms were open. From these two parts, light was shooting out as if from a torch light. So, shooting, spiritual light shooting out from his body. He slowly got down the steep wooden steps. Those of you that have gone there to Kasipur Garden, each step is perhaps more than one foot high. How they would climb and climb down? They, they must have extra power in their knees. In, in our capacity now, we find it difficult even young people to go up and go down. Sri Ramakrishna came down that steep wooden steps, of course helped by Ramla. He saw Narendra and others resting after their night spiritual practices in a room below. Even now, there are two rooms and the third one occupied by mother. Mother is just, as soon as you can get down from the stairs, right, right in front is the room where mother stayed and cooked. Now that has become a small shrine. And next to that one is the devotees room, where the householder devotees used to rest. And the next one is the Narendra and others, the direct disciples, the youngsters, they used to stay in that room. Today also, whoever were there on that day, their photographs are there in that room. The Narendra and others who were all there on that day, their photographs are there. Householders are also are there. So these two rooms. So he has to cross these two rooms and come out from that building. So Sri Ramakrishna comes down there. He saw Narendra and others resting after the night spiritual practices. Narendra, they used to serve Sri Ramakrishna throughout the day and he accept one or two. Others used to take, can take rest in the night, but they would not take rest. They would do spiritual practices, do japa, meditation, the night. So Sri Ramakrishna guessed. Now they are resting because the whole night they were not, they have not taken rest. They were meditating. So he smiled and then moved up beside them. Then when he comes out, and later on when he comes to the devotees' room, these devotees were discussing. Then he went and asked, what are you discussing? They said, sir, about you alone, that you are the incarnation, like that, your, your divinity we are discussing. Then, you know, they are discussing my divine nature. They are good people, he said. And then he moved off from there. Then he passed by them smiling and came out from the western door onto the road, covered with red dust. Now that red dust is not there, no black tar road is there. So, the road goes to the main entrance. Almost it's about uh, 400, 500 yards away. And half the path, there is a mango tree. There was a mango tree. Now also there is a mango tree. We have planted new one. Because we had to plant. At that time there was a mango tree. So we, and there, is, there are several mango trees. People, have, people know there was a mango tree. They would go and put all their money, etc. at any mango tree they would like. They said, better we plant another one, where the original one was. So we have planted another tree. People know where it was now. Then, along with Sri Ramakrishna, Latu also came, when Mother Sri Ramakrishna was getting out. So it is the duty of the direct disciples to take care of him. Latu also followed him. But when he got down to the road and started moving, there were several other householder disciples. So when they were there, then Latu said, Oh, I have got so many, so much work to do in Sri Ramakrishna's room. So he went away, leaving Sri Ramakrishna 
in the care of the devotees. So these one or two devotees, along with them, Sri Ramakrishna started walking. Then, Holy Mother was also there in that building. In Kasipur Garden, Holy Mother was there. But Holy Mother never came along with it. She would never come. It is written in her life. Only once she has been seen along with Sri Ramakrishna together. They were there together, but they were never seen together at all. Only Yoginma once was standing there. Holy Mother was taking leave of Sri Ramakrishna to go to Kamarpukur. And on that event, Mother has come to salute Sri Ramakrishna on the northern porch of the Rakshaneshwar room. Then Sri Ramakrishna is standing. Mother is saluting him. Then Yogin Masi is both of them together. This was the sacred couple they were. Holy Mother was there in the house. She did not come out. He may have peeped through the window what Sri Ramakrishna is doing. In fact, one of the paintings are there in Calcutta. It is a printed picture where Mother is looking out from the window at the Kalpataru incident. Kalpataru incident she did not see. Perhaps she must have peeped through some window. Thus Sri Ramakrishna, accompanied by a few devotees, not any direct disciples there, slowly walked towards the main gate. So we have already said, it was about 3 p.m. About halfway, there was a mango tree under which several devotees were sitting and resting. They had come and they were discussing about Sri Ramakrishna, thinking they would not be able to see him. But it is Sri Ramakrishna's idea that I will go out and have a stroll. Suddenly they found Sri Ramakrishna is coming towards them. Among them Sri Ramakrishna. So Sri Ramakrishna approached them sitting under the tree. Among them Sri Ramakrishna noticed Girish Chandra Ghosh, Ram Chandra Datta and Girish Chandra Ghosh's brother Atul and Akshay Kumar Sen and Master Mahashya, Vaikunt Nath Sanyal, Bhupen Muzumdar, Bhupendra Mukherjee, a poor young devotee, and others, totaling about 30 to 32, all of them are there under the tree. They were discussing Sri Ramakrishna's teachings. As soon as they saw their master, Sri Ramakrishna, they started saluting him. They just rushed towards him, then they touched his feet and saluted him. But when Girish Kesh Ghosh came, Sri Ramakrishna said to Girish, Girish, what have you seen in me that you are proclaiming that I am incarnation of God and such things? So Girish was, as you know, was a great dramatist. Just like a drama actor, he just knelt before Sri Ramakrishna and folded his both hands and putting his head up like that, looking at Sri Ramakrishna, he said, absolutely unmoved by such a question, he he told to Sri Ramakrishna, Sir, what can I, a poor wretch, say about him whom even Vyasa and Valmiki could not describe properly? Vyasa and Valmiki, Vyasa who wrote Mahabharata, Valmiki who wrote Ramayana, Vyasa wrote about Krishna and Valmiki wrote about Rama. So those people, they try to write about only half of your reincarnation. Now both of you are together. Rama and Krishna, both of you, both of them are together in you. What can I, poor wretch, I am neither was Vyasa or Valmiki, what can I write about you? So with utmost humility, he said this one, shedding tears of humility and joy. Then Girish, when he referred to Ramayana and Mahabharata, he was referring to Rama and Krishna, and Sri Ramakrishna was that Rama and Krishna himself. So it is reminding his own innate godly nature that immediately threw him into Samadhi. Sri Ramakrishna went into deep Samadhi, becoming himself that Rama and Krishna, that Brahman itself. His face shone with a divine light. So did his whole body, through, though it was covered. On seeing this transformation, the devotee started saluting him again and again. Some had already saluted him. They came back again. All of them started, one after another, saluting him. Each one, when they saluted and got up, Sri Ramakrishna touched every one of them. And then say, said, what more shall I say to you? May the spiritual consciousness of you all be awakened. Arki Bolbo. 
what more shall I say to you? Tomade Chaitun Nuhok. May you all be spiritually illumined. As soon as he said this, as each got up after after touching his feet, Sri Ramakrishna blessed him, touching his chest and saying to every sin individual also, Chaitanuho, Chaitanuho, be you awakened spiritually. This touch made each one realize high spiritual truths they were struggling to attain. One, one Bhupati attained Samadhi Dairisha. He sat down and start, got into a deep Samadhi. Another Vaikuntanath Sanyal saw Sri Ram Krishna everywhere, in trees, on, in, on, in the river, all around in the buildings, wherever he saw, he saw the form of Sri Ram Krishna. And of course inside himself also. Many others like Ramlal saw their Ishta Devata living and moving inside themselves and so on. All began singing God's praises and offering flowers at the feet of Sri Ram Krishna. Girish, when he saw the whole people, everybody is in ecstasy, everybody is experiencing the joy of God, one person suddenly Girish remembered that was the cook who was cooking inside the kitchen of Kasipur garden. Girish ran to him. That was his, he was one Ganguli. He pulled that fellow out. You fellow, you are losing a great opportunity. Come, go and fall at the feet of Sri Ram Krishna and beg. And you will also get spiritual realization. It really happened. This cook, he, he never knew anything about spirituality perhaps. He has come there for earning something. He suddenly went, fell at the feet of Sri Ram Krishna. He was also enlightened. Sri Ram Krishna touched him also. Told him, Chaitanya, oh, this Ganguli was also just got the spiritual awakening. Only one person who asked something other than spiritual illumination was Upendra Mukherjee. He was a very poor boy, he was visiting Sri Ramakrishna earlier several times. He took this opportunity and prayed for wealth. Sir, I want a little wealth. Then Sri Ramakrishna said, wealth, you will have plenty of it. So, he later on, he became very wealthy and a charitable figure also. He did lot of charities and did good works and served the direct disciples and the other disciples of the Master. That is later on. So, he also got whatever he wanted. Then in the end came Akshay Kumar Sen. So, Akshay Kumar Sen had a desire to touch the feet of Sri Ramakrishna. Till then he had not touched him. Once he went to touch his feet, Sri Ramakrishna moved away. So Akshay Kumar son was very much offended. He said, I am I unfit to touch his feet. So he was nurturing that pain in his mind. Some Sri Ramakrishna knew that. Instead of just touching him, he embraced Akshay Kumar son on that day. So Akshay Kumar was sin, could not stand on his feet at all. He collapsed on his feet due to the high spiritual ecstasy. Thus, this divine sport Everybody is in spiritual ecstasy. Everybody is offering flowers at the feet of Sri Ram Krishna. Somebody is reciting slokas from the different scriptures or the stotra books, hymns and uh, praises of Sri Ram Krishna are going on. It looked almost like a spiritual mart where everybody is dancing. In a, they, everybody is in a half-conscious state. So Sri Ram Krishna, this whole scene went on for about half an hour. And then afterwards, Sri Ramakrishna returned to his house, to the, to the place where he was staying, slowly treading his way back. And all the people sat down with their great ecstasies. Then one person who, did, who was not there was Hazra. This clown and the villain of the drama of Sri Ramakrishna came much later. So when he came, then he went to Sri Ramakrishna, hearing that everybody has got spiritual benefit. He rushed into Sri Ramakrishna's room. But Sri Ramakrishna was in a different mood. He was no more in that mood of Kalpataru. When he found him, then he asked Latu, Latu, send him out. Let him not come now. I am tired. So Latu asked him to go out. So he came out. He felt, you see, I am deprived of this Kalpataru day. He ran to Narendra. Narendra, you see, I want this grace. Everybody, every one of you have got it. 
I must get this grace today. Narendra took him back. And then Sri Ramakrishna said, no, I will not, he is not fit, yet, fit enough to take it. No, sir, you must bless it. He says, no, and Narendra will not leave. So due to the imploring by Narendra on behalf of Azra, so Sri Ramakrishna yielded. He will get it at the last part, last moment of his life. And it happened that Azra passes away, taking the name of Sri Ramakrishna, seeing a vision of him. So that is the greatness of this great devotees of God. Devotees of God are those who will intervene between, between our inability or uh, our undeservingness and the mercy of God. God is not bestowing his mercy, but we think we are deserving. We must get his mercy. Only way is not directly approaching. Go through some devotee. So devotee will intervene. And through that devotee, God will bestow his grace. That is one of the things that happened on that day. So, that the man is in his real nature. What is the meaning actually? Sri Ramakrishna blessed. May your spiritual consciousness be awakened. What does that mean? Man is in his real nature. Pure consciousness, which is eternal and fearless. Which is infinite love and joy which is infinite knowledge and infinite power. So that means we have all the power in the world, all the joy and love in the world, and all fearlessness in the world. We are not aware of it at all. So to make us aware that we can live in a fearless way and with most, uh, with, love, with infinite joy and love in our heart and with every power that we can conceive, we, we know that we are that powerful people. To make us know that one is to make us aware of our spiritual, spiritual uh, dimension. That means man becomes immortal, free, infinitely joyful and powerful when once he realizes his real nature. What greater blessing can there be than this? When we analyze all our struggles, we are struggling only for this one. We want to get out of fear. We are afraid of diseases. We are afraid of violent people. We are afraid of all weapons. We are afraid of uh, um, harmful creatures. What is it we are afraid of? We are afraid of death. That is why we are afraid of all these things. When once we realize we are the souls, which is beyond death, all fear will go. Similarly, we, are, we want power. How much power do you want? You become the president of the whole world. Even then you are afraid that in other worlds also there may be some people greater than you. So fear will not go. Real fearlessness will come. Real power will come when you know everything that is to be known in the world. You know what is here, you know what is in the other worlds. In the whole universe there is nothing but that you do not know. When you know, you have no fear. Only people fear of things that they do not know. It is not the fear, fearsomeness of any object. It is our ignorance of the knowledge that makes us fear. Ignorance is the source of fear. So Sri Ramakrishna bestows infinite knowledge. That means all fear will go. We are neither afraid of devatas or hobgoblins or, dev, or ghosts or any other being. Even Yama himself we will not be afraid. Because we know what Yama is. He is also one of people, the individual souls like us doing his duties. What can he do to me? So infinite knowledge and infinite power will come to us. So that is what we are struggling for. Power, power we are running here. For infinitesimal is small power. We will get infinite power when we know we are the souls. Similarly, we want joy, we want love. We will get infinite when we know it is all there in our own soul. This self-realization is the goal for which all our other efforts at learning, money making, acquiring power should lead us to. We do not know that when we ask for learning, we ask for infinite learning, but we are giving only some small paltry bit. That is why we are dissatisfied. We just get a doctorate degree in some subject. Are we very much satisfied? There are so many hundreds of professors having doctorates. They are just so miserable as, uh, miserable as we are without that degree. 
So, because a degree is a very, very small amount of knowledge that cannot give the joy. Infinite learning we must be get, and infinite power we get, infinite, infinite wealth we get when we realize the power of the soul. So, this is that this knowing our soul, knowing ourselves as that infinite Atman, is the like the number one after which zeros are placed, they get their values. You write one lakh, one followed by five zeros. So if you re remove one zero, there is some value, ten thousand will be there. If you leave another one zero, one thousand will be there. If you leave another zero, hundred at least will be there. Some value will be there. If you don't remove all that, only remove that one, one, the whole five will fall to pieces. Or even you have fifty, fifty zeros also. Whole thing will go immediately. As soon as this one goes, the whole lot falls flat. There is no meaning at all. Whole universe of its wealth, power, name, fame, all attractions, everything will go to peace. When once we know, when we, when we are ignorant that we are the Atma. All this must lead us to achieve this one. This is what Sri Ramakrishna was telling. I bless you that all of you realize your soul. Be awakened means you all become this one. So that all that you have in the world has a meaning. A man who knows that he is living for God and God is there. So for him, money will be a great thing to be, help others, to give in donation, to feed people, to enjoy, to, to, to support all the great artists in every field. Money is a blessing for him. Whereas a person who doesn't have this spiritual knowledge, money means only drink for him. Money only is poison for him. Money is only death for him. It is a death. It is going to destroy. So this one is very important. Sri Ramakrishna, when he blessed that you have self-realization, he was giving us this idea that realize that you are the souls so that everything that you have in this world becomes meaningful. Self-realization, God-realization. So without that, the whole acquiring anything in this world is trash. That is why Sri Ramakrishna blessed, be you awakened spiritually, awakened to the spiritual goal of life. Sri Ramakrishna's blessing was in response to Girish's praise that Rama and Krishna could not be known enough by even Valmiki and other great rishis. That means people did not realize the greatness of Rama and Krishna so, Sri Ramakrishna has come again. You are fools, you did not understand Rama and Krishna. At least now understand. I am again come back to you. May you all realize the nature of Sri Ramakrishna, Rama and Krishna through Sri Ramakrishna, who is now before you. So, even as Rama and Krishna did, I have also come to help every struggling soul. May you all realize this. Chaitanya would of you. The spiritual spiritual dimension of you. May you all come to me and through me cross over this ocean of samsara. So Shardhananji wrote that Sri Ramakrishna revealed himself as a bestower of fearlessness to all. Shakal ki abhaya pradhan kore chile. So Shardhananji wrote, he gave fearlessness to all by giving them the awakening of their own spiritual consciousness. All Shakal came in, to all he gave this fearlessness. That all includes us also. For those that were there at that time, those that follow after time, for everybody, he has given that fearlessness. So we are here to celebrate Sri Ramakrishna's Kalpataru. So we also has, have that blessing. We will also get our awakening and then get over our fearlessness, fear, fearfulness. It was 1st January, a world-renowned holiday to millions of human beings not only in India, but all over the globe. Doesn't that mean he bestowed his grace on all men and women everywhere in the world? So in a universal holiday of the whole world, his blessing, I bless all of you, become awakened. So it goes beyond the borders of India also and takes and gives blessings to everyone outside also. So we see the, some of the greatest sinners like Girish and the Ghosh, they were also saved on that day. So none of us need feel hesitant. We have not done our sadhana, so will he bless us? 
His blessing is upon every one of us. Only if we are earnest in our prayers. So, he, Sri Ram Krishna, the sinner of the worst order had become a saint by his saintly, by Sri Ram Krishna touch. And Girish himself wrote, if you want to know that Sri Ram Krishna was God himself, see at me what I was and what I am now. This is a great lesson Sri Ram Krishna has given to the world, that no sin is a bar, no other failing is a bar. Let anything be there. Have you faith? Have you got earnestness? You come to me, I will relieve you of all your burdens. So it is man's character, individual and collective, that is at the root of all progress and development of individual society. Now, all of us are thinking, so God Sri Ram Krishna has come as an incarnation of God, so he must give us all around development. Our country must develop also, our society must develop, and individuals also develop. How can it happen? By this mere spiritual knowledge. So Sri Ram Krishna is not a mere spiritual knowledge. The spiritual knowledge brings us the character. This character comes with the awakening of spiritual consciousness. When once the character comes, the, all the fields of life will, be, will become better. Why are we not having a good government? Because characterless people are there. Why are we not having our medical field, not brilliant doctors? Doctors with compassion and love are not there. Character is not there. Why are our buildings are falling down within 10 years of construction? Because it properly it has not been conducted. The money has been siphoned off. Characterless engineers are there. Everywhere, characterlessness has been our weakness. To get this character, where should we go? We should go to Sri Ram Krishna. We must get awakened that we are spiritual entities. We don't have to feel for money here and there. It is already there. Sri Ram Krishna, the, the infinite bounty and treasure of all wealth is there. He is behind us. Why should I go and feel for money here or there? So we will become full of character. Every field will be full of good doctors, good engineers, good architects, and good politicians, good sociologists, good professors. So the whole society, whole humanity, whole world will become a heaven, as Abhiramananda was telling. This is for which Sri Ramakrishna came, and by making all the people awakened in a trice, he demonstrated to us that the Lord himself has come this time and he must have, he might have given up his physical body but his spiritual body is with us. He is ever with us. Only we have to pray to him with sincerity. He has taught us how to pray also. We have only to read his Amuda Murigal, his Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna and meditate on his life and our lives will be transformed. So may we pray on this sacred day that he blesses all with his golden touch, with his spiritual touch, so that we also get awakened to our spiritual dimension. We also feel we are all the children of God. We also feel we are divine and become full of sterling character. May our lives become full of truthfulness, full of purity, full of love of God, full of selflessness, full of love and compassion. So may we become ideal people. By the grace of God, by ourselves we cannot. By grace of God, every one of us can become like that. Let us pray today to Sri Ram Krishna to make us all worthy children of Him. Give us joy in this world and joy in our spiritual world also. Niranjanam nityamanantarupam bhaktanukam padhrita vigraham vai Ishavataram Paramesha Midyam Tamrama Krishnam Shirasana Mama